Hi friends, my name is Tris, and this is No Boilerplate, focusing on fast, technical videos. Today we're going to talk about a key part of software development that doesn't involve writing software. We're going to talk about why Agile at your company sucks. I'm going to make some recommendations in this video, but if you're short on time, you can stop here. It's not just enough to do only what is valuable. You must resist doing what is not. Much of this video is inspired by the excellent blog post Less is More Agile by Gerald Banishka. Thanks, Gerald. In it, he doesn't say this in so many words, but I will. Agile sucks. Specifically, the way it is understood in most companies around the world today. Probably in your company right now, there are overheads that annoy you. If you are a software engineer, you might spend more than half your time in meetings not writing software. This madness must stop. Let me take a step back. This isn't going to be a pessimistic video. I don't know how to make one of those. I actually have really good news for you. Agile is great. It's not just great, it's better than that. It's the only thing that works. The principles of agile software development are so simple. The values of interaction, working software, collaboration, and responding to change are universally agreed upon. But where did these principles come from? It was obvious to the experienced manifesto authors in 2001. Building software has been nothing like previous construction projects like building bridges, railroads, or cars. And if you treat it like it is, it goes wrong. For all of history, construction projects were better if they were planned meticulously. If you build a house, you can't adjust the size of the walls to suit the roof if you discover that it doesn't fit when you build it. But in software, everything is malleable, and huge changes can be made in a single day, sometimes in a single hour. But the memory of history throws a long shadow. We paint ourselves into a corner again and again. This is the core difference in our industry, I think. Instead of taking two hours to plan a new feature, each engineer could build their own prototype in those two hours, and will pick the best one from the ten choices, and tomorrow we'll do it all again based on the customer's feedback. The cost of failure in building software is nearly zero. What does that tell you about how much planning we should do? Nearly zero. Not zero, but nearly zero. Andy Hunt here sums up the problem clearly. Too often, when a company says, we do Agile, what they mean is they have implemented the parts of Scrum that they like and are tracking projects in Jira. Or Trello, I suppose, now that the company that makes Jira owns Trello. Here is a quote by Martin Fowler, and it's indicative of a sickness in our industry. A plague of frameworks sold to management to supposedly improve Agile. What is safe, by the way? I looked it up. It's a nightmare. Even in their lean principles here, SAFE appears to me to crush the Agile methodology with heavyweight processes and tools. Which is incredible, because let me remind you, the Agile manifesto directly suggests deprioritizing processes and tools, and instead focusing on individuals and interactions. I'm sure that you can find a company and a team for every tool in the SAFE book or the lean book or whatever course you would like to sell to gullible managers. But the whole idea is that your team is supposed to figure it out themselves. Every person on this planet is unique. Therefore, every team of people is a permutation of those already unique attributes. How can Scrum fit everything? My recommendations, after I shout out another Rust-focused YouTube channel, Code to the Moon. Ken makes similar videos to me, lots of Rust as well as linked technical topics. When I was first trying to understand RC and ARC, his video, Rust's Alien Data Types, explained these concepts in such clear language, I grokked it immediately. And his video on the Helix editor was a great explanation of the new motions and config you need to know, especially coming from Vim, as I do. The Code to the Moon videos have great audio, great video, and Ken keeps the script tight, which you know I appreciate. He's even adopted the errata pinned comment, which I think shows great journalistic integrity. Check him out, search for Code to the Moon on YouTube, or head to cttm.io. Back to how much I love Scrum. I don't love Scrum. Alan Halub doesn't think it's the best either. What Agile does very, very well is build the right thing, iteratively, whilst involving the customer. What it does very badly is answer the question, when will it be done? And this is a problem, because people with the money very reasonably want the answer to this question. Scrum evolved as a lightweight wrapper around extreme programming to sneak Agile into an organization that demands deadlines and project tracking. But once deployed, the ceremonies of Scrum became the fixation of management. 
And the whole thing only gets worse when agile training companies are looking to sell courses, qualifications, and books. Soon, even engineers think they hate agile. So what's the solution? I have a few ideas for where you can start. Firstly, don't estimate. Look back at the estimations you made last sprint. Did the estimation exercise help you build better software? Sure, you might have tweaked the scope of the sprint, but time and tide would have done this for you. You know how to figure out how much is in a sprint? Work as fast as you can, then in two weeks, see how much you did. What would you have done better if you had estimated the individual stories? By contrast, Gerald likes no bullshit estimation here, which has three sizes of estimation. One point, too fucking big, no fucking clue. I think this is actually where the name for NFCs came from, now that I see it written down. I'll remind you again, if estimation takes longer than doing the work, you morally must not do it. And software is so fast to develop. That's why we're all here, right? In just a few lines of code, we can get the computer to do a set of instructions so quickly that it's indistinguishable from magic. And some people don't know how easy this is, especially if they're non-programmers. They look at the box with the blinking lights and reasonably assume it must be built in the same way that bridges, railroads, and cars are built. Of course, you and I know it's much more direct than that. We've got access to a sort of field programmable demon who can do our bidding and basically grant wishes. We express those wishes in code. And in Silicon Valley, they often come true. Back to the concrete advice. Sprints are called ceremonies, which the dictionary defines as an action performed only formally with no deep significance. You've got to remember that sprints are a framework to make Agile palatable to management. They don't actually help you build software. Resist, and just deliver value, getting feedback from the customer as early as you can. Build something and show it to the customer. There's your plan. Agile is not Scrum. Agile is not Sprints. Agile is not Stories or Kanban boards or planning poker. Agile is doing what is valuable and not doing what is not. Scrum has bad incentives like velocity, overplanning, and doing exactly two weeks of work. If you measure something and rate what is good on metrics that don't actually align with your core job of making good software that the user wants, then you have provided a metric that is in opposition to that core goal. So what is the best metric? I've told you already, and you already know. Working software is the way to judge performance. Not beautiful documentation or designs or prototypes. Working software. Though there is plenty of value in the others, we value working software the highest. Anything that gets in the way of working software, by our user's definition of working, is a distraction. Read the manifesto. Do what is valuable, and don't do what is not. Thank you for your time. If you'd like to support my channel and get early ad-free and tracking-free videos and VIP Discord access, head to patreon.com forward slash no boilerplate. If you're interested in transhumanism and hope punk stories, please check out my sci-fi podcast, Lost Terminal. Or if urban fantasy is more your bag, click the bottom video to listen to a strange and beautiful podcast I produce called Modem Prometheus. Transcripts and markdown source code are available on GitHub, links in the description, and corrections are in the pinned errata comment. Thank you so much for watching, talk to you on Discord.